Where shall we go today? Where shall we go? Where do you want to go today? Let's visit Bath. The architecture in Bath is very, very posh indeed. It's uh, very Victorian, for example, this car park here, which was built many, many years ago by people who were building the car park at the time. Just look at the uh, ceilings in the building. I mean, they are, it's amazing, the stairs and there's, there's like, it's, it's beautiful Victorian stuff at its best. Baths, the city centre, is uh, full of shops, including H&M and Costa and, and other posh shops like that. Sadly, they're all closed at the moment. Many tourists come to Bath, and the reason for that is because all the roads lead here, like that one and uh, that one, and um, that one, and um, that one, oh, and that one. So yes, in fact, all roads lead to Bath. This is some kind of art installation in Bath. Um, they do these things because they're rather posh. And uh, you've even got a Laura Ashley for ragging out loud. I mean, come on. You don't get posher than a lorry, a lorry, a lorry, a lorry Ashley. But there you go, there is one, a lorry Ashley. And an office as well. But it's not even a pop, it's, a, it's look, it sells shoes, it's a shoe office. So this installation was put in to celebrate the uh, beautiful summer and spring here in Bath. And in fact, it carries on all the way down here to this rather bizarre, could even be a strawberry, but I don't think it is. I'm not an expert on plants. But look at this. This is bizarre, to say the least. It's a post, oh, well, not a post box, it's a telephone box with no telephone in it, it's just got plants in it instead. Bath, how posh. Even the sculptors in Bath are posh. I mean, look at that one, it's just got loads of words on it that mean nothing to me because I cannot read. Well, my lifelong search is over. I found Geo Bindson, where they are uh, book binders. Um, and a bookseller as well. I've been looking for a bookbinder forever. I'm really made up. <laughs> Sadly, it's closed at the moment. As we all know, the Victorians invented trains, which means they also invented train stations. And this is Bath's train station. It's quite modest, really, considering it's in Bath. And Bath is a very posh place. It's not a very posh railway station. A bit disappointed by it. You know what you're thinking? You're thinking, oh, there's bikes there, so it must be in Cambridge or Roxford or wherever the hell it was. Well, I'm not, and I can prove it, because if I spin round, there's actual motorbikes. These guys are a lot richer than the people in Cambridge or Oxford or wherever it was. Bath's bus station is actually quite posh. It's kind of surrounded by metal and stone and stuff, and it's round. But it's long and thin as well, so that the buses can actually park a couple of people get on them. Bath has this river that runs through it, well, near it, to be fair. It's not really through it. Um, and it's got this fence all the way along it. And the reason for the fence is because, well, the people of Bath, some of them are not very well educated. It seems they have to stay in school until well into the 20s, which obviously means that they don't pick up simple things like health and safety and that kind of thing. So this has been put here to stop people falling in the water and drowning before the age, you know, before they learn to swim maybe at the age of 20 or whatever. <laughs> nice, isn't it? And safe as well, look. Oh, can't go in. Oh, can't go in. See? It works perfectly. This behind me is the famous crescent of buildings. Uh, private houses that were built in Victorian times. Um, problem with this bath is it's kind of based on water. Water's the main thing. The problem is when you have rulers that are made of wood and they get wet, they go a bit curvy. So exactly the same issue that they had at uh, Buxton they should have been straight, but no, thanks to the water and wooden rulers, we got the crescent to Bath. Well, let's be honest, it's a bit nicer than it would be if it was straight. Now, these are just houses, but look at the entrances to them. They're amazing. What's even more amazing is, it goes on all the way down the street. A stunning architecture. Gotta love Bath. I don't think to take into account on this street is the height of the buildings. They are three stories high plus a basement and Look on the other side, they've got attics as well. These were basically the first ever high-rise apartments. Although technically they're all just one house, but you know what I mean. Sadly, he only had one ruler, so he built these as well. But this time, this does a complete circle. He did think ahead. He did plant some acorns in the middle, 
hoping one day that he'd be able to make a straight ruler. Unfortunately, I think he passed away before the tree was big enough, and now it's huge. You can make millions of rulers. It would solve the problem of all these bent, curved houses, wouldn't it? Bath was named after Bath, which were invented here in Bath. And uh, obviously they named the town after it. One day I'm hoping to go to shower. Everything's wibbly wobbly in Bath, for example. The pavement on that side of the road is higher than the pavement on this side of the road. Must be that really rubbish reeler again. Now, a while ago, I criticised the company for calling its uh, restaurants a really rubbish name. Yeah, there's another one, Slug and Lettuce. Maybe I was wrong after all. I'm not saying Bath is posh, but Bath is posh. Not only has it got a moss broth, it's also got a sofa workshop, not a sofa works like other places have got. And it's also got, not a Laura Ashley, better than that. It's got an Indian Jane, as well as a Brizimo, which I'm not going to show you what's in the window because, well, it's just a bit scary. And there's even posher ones on the other side. So, Bath. Bath is the poshest place I've been ever. Up to now, anyway. It's not always been posh, though. We see a posh shop there, which is called Gabucci, which is like a merger of lots of things. You're all right. Um, but above it, it actually says, brush manufactory, so they used to make brushes there. That's not posh. Although, in the older days, people didn't have brushes, so I suppose it was posh. So once again, with the history of this place, it shows how old it is, there's some more paintings on the wall of this Hobbs shop that show that it used to be a library and reading room. Although I don't know what a circulating library is. Is that the one where the books are on like a conveyor belt and you can never find what you want? Either way, it's shut down and now it's Hobbs. This here is the first ever shopping arcade. It was made about 30 years ago. And look, it's got the royal crest on the top of it as well. Or a crest of some sort. And, go around the side of it, you can see it's a whole row of shops. But it's dead narrow. It's like one wide and six long. It's the weirdest thing ever. Look at it. It's like something at Hogwarts. I'll be saying that again, I would have thought soon. If you like monuments and big buildings to fairy tales that people like all over the world, then there's a massive one behind me. Yes, it's a church. And guess what? It's quite nice. Walking down this narrow road, I definitely feel that I, I must be able to buy a wand or something around here. But looks like the wand shop's shut. It's too late. Either that or it's a toilet and they miss the eye out. People used to be poor around here, and that's why there's all these bike racks everywhere. But everyone's made a load of money now, so they don't need them. And they all go to this massive church. Which again, it's still actually rather pretty, I think. This church is good. It's not bad at all. Queen Victoria, she was quite posh. And she used to have a bath, so they've erected a statue here. She had a bath once a year, whether she needed it or not. Or was that someone else? If you're a believer in fairy stories that have been around for 2,000 plus years, like that gentleman over there, for example, then you go to these places, which are called churches. And they're very spectacular and they're very beautiful, but they're also very closed at the minute, unfortunately, due to uh, renovations. Right, so not only is this abbey one of the oldest abbeys in the world, it was the first one in the world to have underfloor heating that used water and not fire like the Romanians used back in the day. And look, they've discovered it, they've dug it up, and that's why they shut it, because it had a leak or something, I don't know. Obviously, water plays a massive part in Bath's history, what with it being the one that invented Bath in the first place. And here is a woman representing the woman who actually invented the first bath. But you can tell from it, it was only for a little dog or something. But either way, bath, very posh, and very full of water. Behind me are the Roman baths, because, well, I told a bit of a porky before, it was the Romans who invented baths. And you can go in here for a small fee, or alternatively, you can, uh, you can look at the picture on the wall for free. So I'm doing that. I've actually managed to get inside, and I never realised the Romanians were actually so good at building. It almost looks like it was built by Victorians or Edwardians, but no, it's Roman bath, so it must be Romans who built it. Rom Romanians, Romans. I was getting confused. I mentioned before that the uh, bath used to be famous for brushes. Well, here's a brush being used in an unconventional way here in Bath. Uh, I don't exactly know what's going on, but it's, it's quite amusing. Just standing here watching for half an hour. I don't know what she's doing at all, but it's very funny. To be fair, the Victorians are rather untrustworthy because you've been telling you for ages that they invented these walkways that you walked under so you wouldn't get wet when you were shopping because the Victorians didn't like getting shopping wetting or wetting shopping. It's also some terrible music, I do apologise about that. Well, guess what? The Romans did it first. Here we are, a perfectly preserved Roman and kings and queens bath 
and Roman walkways underneath outside shops so you don't get wet when it rains and you're shopping. Victorians, another idea robbed by the thieving school. I'm a bit confused. Um, this is like Romanian or something and it's called the cross bath. It looks like a swimming pool to me. Once again, once again we see some of the uh, old reusage of these buildings. This one for example has on it a Hetling pump room. So if you want some Hetling pumping this is where you'd go. If you're unlucky enough to be rubbish at parking you will get a ticket with the poshest traffic warden ever. He's got a suit on and everything. How posh! Bath! Even the traffic wardens are posh. When you're in Bath, even the posh, no, even the rubbishy places are posh. For example this, which is the tastier restaurant. It should now. I'm surprised. It wants to eat a restaurant. You want to eat the food that the restaurant makes. Bath. If you want to go somewhere where even the Warhammer shop is in a posh place, which is still the scruffy side of town, but it's still posher than anywhere else, then come to Bath. Or alternatively, go somewhere else. But Bath is well worth a visit. It's lovely. Till next time, goodbye. Where shall we go today? Where shall we go? Where do you want to go today? Let's visit.